Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. So glad that you could all join us this morning. Um, what a wonderful way to begin uh, worship, uh, but with uh, Dale and crew. Um, that was terrific. Uh, and looking forward to uh, hearing more uh, as uh, worship uh, uh, progresses. Um, we're just so glad that you could be here this morning. I uh, want to thank uh, uh, David uh, for being our uh, worship leader this morning. And um, I'm very glad to be back with you. Um, it seems like a very long time ago that I was on retreat uh, in Hazard, Kentucky, uh, with um, a couple of youth from our church, uh, Taylor Ulicki, who's with us this morning, uh, and uh, Josh uh, Jock. Um, and we, the three of us from our church, accompanied the Grafton uh, Pilgrim UCC. Uh, there were four uh, kids and uh, four adults from the uh, Grafton Church that went, and uh, we had a great, great experience. Uh, we were working with the Appalachia Service Project, which is a nonprofit uh, faith-based group that's been working in Appalachia for 30 years, I think over 30 years, and uh, we were working um, on a woman's home, Kathleen, uh, was our homeowner, and she and her husband uh, lived in this uh, double-wide mobile home, uh, which uh, the uh, the underpinning, which is that that piece of trim that goes around the mobile home between the bottom of the house and the ground, the underpinning uh, had completely kind of uh, gone away, uh, which left it uh, open for uh, animals to get underneath there, as well as for uh, water, and uh, it was it was a little bit of a mess. Uh, and uh, Taylor uh, was quite brave in because uh, we had to work underneath decks and underneath this underpinning, and it was messy and dirty, um, and uh, but somebody had to do it, and uh, we were just the ones ready to go, and uh, so we were able to do that uh, for this uh, very nice uh, couple, um, and uh, you know, kind of bring their home uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more comfort and comfortable, um, not only in the warmer weather but the colder weather that Kentucky will have. Uh, it was a great trip, and uh, but I'm very glad to be back. And uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to stay in a K through 12 high school that had air conditioning. So when we came back from uh, working during the day, we had an air conditioned place to stay. Uh, but we were sleeping on, uh, you know, kind of the tile floor uh, with the help of air mattresses and uh, and um, cushions and things. Uh, but the showers were pretty much just out of your regular old garden hose. So the showers were very uh, very cold, and while, you know, there's a little bit of a, uh, kind of a, a jolt of like, oh, well, that's refreshing, <laughs> that quickly wears off, um, and, uh, but it was, it was a great trip and a great experience, and I am, uh, uh, what we're planning to do is that on August 7th, um, uh, Taylor and Josh hopefully are going to be able to go over to the Grafton Church and kind of present to their congregation what took place and kind of a little bit of uh, their uh, understanding and some of the stories that they're taking with them. Uh, but then on August 14th, uh, everybody's gonna come here to our church and we will present uh, with pictures and stories um, some of the experiences that uh, not only our, our youth had, but the Grafton youth as well. Um, so we hope that uh, you'll be a part of our worship service on August 14th and hear all the stories uh, from this mission trip, and I'm hoping uh, that, you know, next year, we made such a good and favorable impression on the Grafton Church uh, that they have already invited us to participate in next year's mission trip, and so we would like to uh, to do that, and I'm, I'm hoping that we have more uh, participants, both uh, adult and youth, who are willing and able to uh, go and participate in that trip. Um, so, um, Let's see, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we did start up the barbecue Bible studies again. So Tuesday evenings at 5.30, uh, we meet in uh, Fellowship Hall, and if the weather is decent, uh, we sit outside on the patio. Um, last Tuesday, I cooked up some bratwurst and cheddarwurst, and uh, this Tuesday, it'll be hot dogs, um, and everybody who comes brings a dish to pass, and I cook up the hot dogs and uh, it'll be a nice meal, and then we are looking at the Gospel of Luke. Um, this lectionary cycle um, in worship, like this morning, 
uh, we're going to hear a lot of uh, the Gospel of Luke, and so uh, we're kind of just taking a general look at what makes Luke's Gospel a little bit different uh, from the other uh, Gospels, uh, and lifting up some of those major themes. Um, so, if you can, please join us. It really is a nice uh, time. Uh, even though it does include Bible study, it's still a good time. Um, and uh, we really hope that you'll, uh, you'll join us. Uh, you don't need to have participated previously. Uh, you don't need to be an expert on the Bible. We're all learning together. And uh, the conversation and questions are wonderful. So, um, just also uh, one last thing. If you are... If you have something that you'd like to share with the church for our August newsletter, please get it into the church office early this week. Uh, we will be putting together the uh, newsletter so it's ready to be sent out by email um, on August 1st. Uh, if you are somebody that has trouble accessing uh, the newsletter online, please let the office know. We're happy to send out uh, paper copies to folks uh, if you have trouble accessing it. Um, let me lift up some uh, birthdays this week. Uh, tomorrow, the 25th, we're happy to uh, uh, lift up uh, Barb Olson and Jenna Bloomer's birthdays. Uh, July 26th is Blake Piper's birthday. 27th of July is Ann Fleischman. On the 28th of July, we have Gabe Paston. And on uh, July 30th is Macy Esslinger and Joe Wilsnack. So if you see these folks during the week, uh, you correspond with them. Uh, please uh, wish them a very happy birthday. And then we do have two wedding anniversaries this week. John and Michelle Norman are celebrating their anniversary on, uh, oh, that was actually last week, the 22nd. Never mind. <laughs> That's past. You don't need to. Uh, but on the 28th of July, uh, Emil and Jane Schneider are celebrating their anniversary. So uh, if you see them or correspond with them, please do reach out and wish them a very happy anniversary. Um, that's all I have for us right now. We will have an opportunity to lift up joys and concerns for prayer, uh, and we hope that you will uh, share with us if you have any of those uh, joys or concerns, uh, but we'll do that just before the pastoral prayer. Um, this time, let's uh, continue uh, with our uh, prayer. Or intro. who are able, please stand for the call to worship. Come, people of God, here is the door to life. Bring all you are. God is waiting. Stand the door. Come, people of God, 
Here is the door to justice. Leave behind all you do not need. God is waiting. We stand at the door and knock. Come, people of God, here is the door to truth. Behind it is a new way of living. God is waiting. We stand at the door and knock. Come, people of God, here the door is open for all. We come to worship, for now we know God is waiting. Let us sing our opening hymn, number 463, in the new century hymnal, the black hymnal. I look to you in every need. See our prayer of <clears throat> Please join me as we pray in unison. <coughs> Loving God, through our kindness, we ask that you are so sure of what the answer should be. We don't, we don't always catch what the answer is. Help us to do what we know is right. There are times when we search, but when we lose track of what it is we are searching for. first reading this morning is from the prophet Hosea, a one, uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 2 to 10. If you would like to read along, you can find it in the Old Testament of the Pew Bible, page 835. 
When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take yourself a wife of prostitution and have children of prostitution, for the land commits great prostitution by forsaking the Lord. So he went, and he took Gomer, daughter of Diblam, and she received and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel. For in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So she conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Loroham. For I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Rohamah, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Lohame, for you are not my people, and I am not your Lord. Yet the number of people of Israel shall be like the sand of the seas, which can neither be measured nor numbered. And in the places where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. You can find it on page 72 of the New Testament in the Pew Bible. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me, the Lord has already been locked. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything out of friendship, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who receives and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asked for a fish, would give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asked for an egg, would give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here ends the reading of sacred text, may the Spirit add to our understanding of God's holy word.
Let's be in prayer together. <clears throat> Loving God, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of your Spirit that fills this place, the gift of your church, of which we are a part. We pray, God, that beautiful music we hear this day, the words of scripture, the prayers we raise, the songs we sing might all work together, that through your spirit we might be changed, that we might be transformed, that we might be shaped and molded into the disciples that you have always called us to be. Help us, God, to hear your word and to live it out in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, the uh, text from uh, Hosea is, uh, is a difficult one. Um, the whole book of Hosea uh, is a little bit difficult just because uh, of what uh, Hosea believes that God has called him to do, uh, to take a, a, a prostitute as a wife. And then uh, in, in the, the text from Luke, um, Jesus asks kind of a rhetorical question to his disciples about, uh, about even, even we who are fallible parents. Um, you know, if a child asks us for a fish, would we, would we give them a serpent instead? Or if, we, if a child asked for an egg, would we give them a scorpion instead? And um, I think uh, Jesus may have forgotten about the book of Hosea. Uh, because Hosea does some terrible things to his children, uh, kind of naming them after the curses that God, God is so upset and angry with his people that he, that he calls Hosea to name his children, you know, not my people and, uh, you know, not a, a broken covenant, um, but terrible things to do. And yet, even in this difficult, terrible text from Hosea, there is yet a word of hope. Because the last verses of Hosea's are about, you know, a people who had been no people 
will yet still be able to be called the children of God. So even in this uh, text of harsh judgment and kind of uh, where God seems to be so upset that the people of Israel have broken the covenant promises they have made, even here at the end, yet still God is merciful. Jesus' disciples uh, are a little bit out of sorts. Um, Jesus has just, uh, in the previous chapter of Luke's Gospel, uh, Jesus had sent them out in ministry. They had, they had healed uh, people's illnesses. They had uh, exercised demons. Um, he has told them the parable of the Good Samaritan about uh, how um, you know, some of the, the best people um, those who were thought to be holy and uh, righteous had passed by um, somebody who was hurt on the side of the road. And then how this hated uh, Samaritan person had come by and seen someone in need and helped them. And that, in fact, it was this Samaritan that the audience that Jesus was talking to would have thought would be obviously the villain of any story, that it was the Samaritan whose example they should be following. Jesus seems to be implying, you know, that the, 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 the life of discipleship is one of action. The life of discipleship is one of reaching out. The life of discipleship is going on mission trips. The life of discipleship is, is one in which we are at work all the time. And then, just at the end of the chapter, he has this encounter with Mary and Martha. Uh, Martha is you know, overwhelmed with all the things that she has to do to be hospitable and welcoming to those who have come into her home. And her sister Mary just sits on the floor and listens to what Jesus has to say. And Martha's upset. Doesn't Mary see all the things that need to be done? Why doesn't she get up and act like a disciple and start serving and start doing it? And, Mary, and Jesus surprises not only Martha, but I think surprises all the disciples when Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better way, at least in this instance, by sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to what he has to say. And so the disciples, we see in chapter 11, the disciples are wondering, what, what are we to do? And they see Jesus so often kind of separate himself from the group to go off in prayer, to be in a quiet place, to uh, offer devotion and prayer to God. And so they ask Jesus, could you teach us to pray? Could you teach us how to pray as you do? And so Jesus gives them this form of prayer. It's the prayer that we know today as the Lord's Prayer, or if you grew up in the Catholic Church, the Our Father. The, uh, the prayer that we pray, we, we tend to think of it as a prayer, but really Jesus intended it kind of as an outline for any kind of praying. And one of the things that um, uh, every year in the confirmation class and uh, oftentimes uh, hear it from adults too wonder, you know, why is the prayer that is in Luke uh, is so different from the prayer as it is rendered in Matthew? And why are Luke and Matthew so different from the prayer that we lift up in worship today? A little bit later in our worship service, we'll be lifting up the Lord's Prayer. And it's going to be very different from the one that Luke records Jesus as having given to his disciples. And let me just take a minute to talk about that. That's, remember that Jesus, when he was speaking in the first century, was speaking in Aramaic. So Jesus was speaking one language to his disciples. But the Gospels were written in Greek. So almost immediately you go from one language to another language when we hear Luke talking about what Jesus said. It's already a translation. And then we, of course, are reading it in English. And so we're again translating the Greek version, which was a translation of the Aramaic version. So, and then, to make all of it even more confusing, We've got different translations in English. So uh, way back when the Reformation was happening in the 16th century, uh, there was a book of common prayer. And those were uh, uh, 
prayers that all of the, the people in England should be uh, listening or, or should be using and using in worship and using in private personal devotion. And the prayer that we use today, the prayer that we're going to be sharing a little bit later in worship, is almost exactly that prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, which was a part of the Reformation. But the Reformation was using a version of English translation that now we know is not the best translation. So when the English were putting together the Book of Common Prayer, they were using not the Aramaic, not the Greek, but they were actually using a Latin version translated into English. And now we know when, when we read the New Revised Standard Version, we're not reading a translation of the Latin, we're reading a translation of the original Greek. So that's why it's so different, because we're reading a translation of a translation of a translation into a book that now we know is not actually accurate. But I'm not going to change the words of the Lord's Prayer. I can get in a lot of trouble with all of you if I were to say, you know what? We're not going to use the one that you grew up with, the prayer that you've become, uh, you know, has become such a central part of your own perhaps daily prayer life. Um, instead, we're going to read uh, uh, this cryptic form of prayer that Jesus said, which again is a translation of a translation. No, the, uh, the, the, the words, you know, if you go into other churches, you'll hear trespasses. You may have grown up with debts. In our church, we say sins. Forgive us our sins. Um, and again, it's because the word that we're translating is not the original Aramaic. It's not the original Greek. It's an English translation of a translation of a translation. And that word in English can be translated a number of different ways. Uh, if you go back into the NRSV of Matthew, you'll hear it translated as both trespasses and debts. It says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debtors. Yeah. So let's get all really confused. The reason that we say sins today in our church is because we believe that in the English of the 21st century, the closest we can get to that translation of a translation of a translation of what Jesus originally said was that Jesus was asking for forgiveness of our faults, of the things that we had done wrong, the things that we have done poorly, the mistakes that we have made. He's talking about sin. And so that's why in our prayer today we will lift up, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. But whenever you are in a group of folks that is mixed of Catholic and Protestant and Orthodox or whatever brand of Christianity, and you hear that uh, kind of chorus of different versions come out, uh, just remember that all of us, all of their churches are working with translations of translations of translations, filtered through traditions that are hundreds of years old. We're all coming to it. We get close, but we never get all the way to the, to the center. But what I wanted to talk about today was about that prayer. The disciples sensed in Jesus that Jesus was somehow centered in who God was. That Jesus somehow was able to keep himself um, present to the present moment. That he was able to stay focused on God's path for him. That he was able to uh, discern where God was leading and they sensed that all of this ability, this ability that Jesus had to do this, was rooted in Jesus' prayer life. And so it seemed natural for them to ask, teach us to pray. Because they wanted that quality. They wanted to be able to discern where God's will was calling them. They wanted to be able to stand firm on a path that had been set. They wanted to be able to uh, be present to the presence of God in their midst. Not worried, not anxious, not afraid. They saw all of these things rooted in Jesus' prayer life, and I really believe that they were right. That it was Jesus' prayer life that enabled him so clearly to discern 
who God was and where God was leading, to be able to have courage in the face of incredible odds and incredible difficulty, to stand firm in who he was and what he believed was his path amidst chaos all around him. And so Christians today look to do the same thing. But prayer can be difficult. Prayer can be hard. Um, one of the, the sources of guilt and shame in my ministry has been that I'm somebody, I don't think that I'm a very good prayer. It doesn't come naturally to me. Um, early in my ministry, I was guilty of being much more a Martha than a Mary. Uh, Martha being busy about all the tasks, all the things that we needed to do, uh, all the things that we were called to be about and serving the community and serving the world. I was comfortable thinking about God. Uh, if you come to my study, uh, you'll see I've got lots of books because thinking about God, I can do that all day long. But actually being in conversation with God, actually having that kind of personal relationship where I sit in the presence of the divine, that's really weird and uncomfortable and, and difficult for me. And yet, I have found over the years that when I take the time to do that and when I work at it, when I practice prayer, I'm much more together as a person. I'm much more able to discern where God is at work in my life, able to see the, 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 the hands of God at work <clears throat> in the community of faith. But it's not easy, and it's something that takes constant attention and constant care. But it's yet something that I think we as pastors, we as a, a church kind of take for granted, kind of just assume that everybody knows how to pray already. But that's not true. Again, it comes difficult for many of us. Uh, Marjorie uh, Thompson is a writer. She wrote a book called Soul Feast. And I loved it because she talked about, you know, we are a part of a tradition that's 2,000 years old. For 2,000 years, people have been working and practicing and trying to get in touch with the divine and have found some wonderful ways and methods to do so. And yet we, in our current practices as Christians, she said, she, she, the way that she imagined it was that we sit at this banquet table filled with this rich variety of foods and resources that will feed our souls. And yet most of us are comfortable just eating the crumbs that fall off the table. We're, we're, we're comfortable just with the barest beginning of what might be possible if we were to look up and see what is being presented. Think of that 2,000 years of Christians who have devoted their lives to being in touch with the divine, and yet we are ignorant of most of the work that they have done. We don't pay any attention to it. There are a number of different ways um, that I found useful for prayer, and I'm discovering new ones all the time. And not that there are new ways of praying. Um, I, just this year, um, I got involved with uh, Marquette University. They're sponsoring uh, uh, <clears throat> companions and ministry. So it's different ministers from different uh, churches, ecumenical group, gathering together for support and encouragement. And uh, they are really recommending that we use uh, St. Saint, uh, Saint Ignatius Loyola's method of daily examine. Now, Ig Loyola was doing this 500 years ago. I'd never heard of it before. But it's incredible. It's, it's, it's simple. It's something that everybody can use. It's, it's merely a way of looking at what has taken place this day and trying to discern as you think about it and reflect on it, where has God been in today's activities? What am I thankful for in today's, uh, you know, what took place just, just today? Uh, what am I, what, what do I need to seek forgiveness and seek discernment for 
in what happened just today. And then to begin thinking about what am I going to do tomorrow? And how am I going to make little changes in my life and in the things that I do to move past today's activities? It's simple, and yet it can be a game changer for one's prayer life. Uh, fairly early in my ministry, as I was trying to, you know, one of the things that I hated when I was first a minister, I don't hate it anymore, uh, but I used to hate was being asked to pray in public. Now, you would think that a minister should kind of take that for granted, being asked to pray in public. Um, but I tell you, you know, when you're the, the, the clergy person at the, the dinner, and everybody just suddenly turns to you and says, you know, Scott, why don't you say a prayer? You know, it used to drive me a little crazy. I don't, I don't hate it anymore, but there, there are a couple of simple things that you can do. There, there's uh, a, a acronyms called ACTS, A-C-T-S. A simple way of praying in which adoration is the A. Thinking about all the wonderful things that God has done and the wonderful uh, uh, creation that God has made am among us to, to adore God. The second, the C is confession. So you've got adoration, all the things that God is, but confession about the things and our shortcomings. So you do a little bit of confession. And then T is for thanksgiving. To give thanks for all the things that God has done for you. And then the S is supplication, which is a fancy theological word for, you know, what is it that you are seeking God's help in doing in your life? So acts, simple way of praying, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. We adore you, O oh God. We're sorry for the things we've done wrong. Thank you for all the gifts that I've received, help me with this thing. That's a wonderful prayer. Um, Anne Lamont, the writer, she says, if all your prayer, if the furthest you get in your prayer is only, God, help me, help me, help me, thank you, thank you, thank you, that is enough. That's a prayer. That's a prayer seeking God's assistance. That's a prayer that lifts up all the things that we are grateful for. If our prayer only gets as far as help me, God, and thank you, God, that too is enough. But there are so many resources out there for Christians. And when we will take advantage of these resources in our lives, a whole world opens up for us. You know, we may think that God is not very active in the world in the same way that we read about in the Bible. But I'm telling you that when you take the time and practice prayer, suddenly the world begins to light up with God incidences. Not coincidences, but God incidences. Those things that happen that you yearn for, that you long for, but now are occurring. Our prayers today talk about, you know, part of Jesus' teaching to his disciples is about asking, about searching, about knocking. We find when we are people of prayer, when we take the time to do it, suddenly we see that God is, in fact, opening doors for us. God is, in fact, answering our calls. We find that God is, in fact, closer to us than our next breath. But so often we don't take advantage of these resources. Um, this fall, I am going to offer a prayer course um, once a week, uh, probably for uh, September and October. Uh, once a week, we're going to gather together as a group to learn new ways of praying as well as to pray together. And I hope that uh, you'll take it yourself. I hope that you'll uh, invite others to be a part of it. Um, but prayer can really be one of the most important things that we as disciples can do. And as Jesus found, as the disciples sensed within Jesus' ministry, discipleship based in prayer 
begins to build all of the other things that we seek to do. Uh, discipleship based in prayer helps us to discern where God is calling us. Discipleship based in prayer helps us to, to have the energy to do the acts of service that we're called. Uh, a discipleship based in prayer gives us the courage we need to fight the battles of injustice and to fight for peace in this world. Let's uh, be in prayer together. Gracious God, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to your presence in our lives. Build within us a yearning to be closer to you. And in the coming days and weeks, help us to seek your presence out as we build ourselves up and encourage one another in prayer. All this we pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the hymn that we are uh, about to sing, uh, I believe, uh, may be new to, uh, to all of us, and so uh, I'll invite crew to play, play it all the way through once, and then uh, we'll, we'll join in singing it together. At this time, we have a chance to lift up joys and concerns together. Um, I'll just uh, lift up a uh, prayer of concern. Uh, my dad um, was diagnosed with uh, COVID um, on Friday. Uh, he went into the uh, emergency room because he was having a abdominal pain. and. Um, they believe that the abdominal pain was actually caused by COVID. Um, and so he is uh, back home and uh, on an antiviral, and uh, he seems to be doing okay, but I would uh, invite your, uh, your prayers for him. Don, Donald McLeod. So, uh, are there other uh, joys or concerns that uh, we can lift up uh, together as a community? The joys and concerns 
Yeah, and in this uh, heat, uh, there's a heat wave out there. So. Seen him. I, I saw him just before I left uh, for Kentucky, but I've not seen him since. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ken. I will uh, give him a call and see what's happening. Prayers for Bruce. Are there other joys or concerns that we can uh, lift up together? Anything else? Yeah, Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. We lift up prayers for all the folks in Ukraine. Anything else this morning? Joys, concerns? Uh, I would love to put just, just a prayer of joy. Um, you all could be very proud. Uh, Taylor, um, <laughs> uh, Taylor and Josh were uh, wonderful ambassadors uh, for this congregation. Um, they really did an excellent job um, out in Kentucky. Uh, not only the work that they did um, but then also, uh, you know, kind of being put together with a group of uh, folks from Grafton who all kind of always <laughs> knew each other. Um, and uh, uh, Taylor and Josh were, were just terrific. Uh, they worked hard. Uh, they got along with, the, with everybody on the, on the trip. And uh, uh, I think we can, you know, just lift up prayers of joy that they were uh, moved to, uh, to go out there and to, uh, to be a part of that group. Did you want to say something, Taylor? That music to my ears. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, anything else this morning? Well, let's be together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit present to us this day. We give you thanks for the people in our lives family members and friends, both those near and far away. Those who gather together in times of celebration and joy, those who gather together in times of sadness and grief. We thank you, God, for the support that we have felt. We thank you, God, for the love that we have experienced. We thank you, God, for the members of this community of faith. We thank you for giving the talents and the abilities, the gifts that you have given to each one that enable us to be the body of Christ at work in the world. We thank you, God, for the way that you are present to each one of us in times of trial, you stand with us, ready to bring peace and comfort. In times of challenge, you strengthen us and give us courage. In times of sickness, you 
bring your healing touch. We thank you, God, for all of those who reach out to one another in service and in discipleship. We know that we're not always the people that you've called us to be. Times when we have turned away from one another. Times when we have not been the people that you want us to be. But God, you grant us your grace and your forgiveness. We stumble, we fall, but each time, God, you encourage us to get up again, to move forward, to learn from mistakes, to be more loving, to be more forgiving, to be more giving of ourselves. Today, our prayers reach out beyond just this community of faith. They reach out to all those we know to be in need of your spirit, in need of your presence. And so we lift prayers for Don McLeod and pray that he knows your healing touch. We lift prayers for Jeff's friend's daughter running an Ironman competition in difficult weather. We're so thankful that she's doing well, and we pray for her continuing health and strength. We lift up Bruce Lobbs in our prayers. Pray for his continued healing. We pray, God, for the people of Ukraine. We pray that you might bring an end to violence. We pray that you might encourage all of us to bring peace into the world. And now in the silence of our sanctuary, God, we pray that you would hear us as we open our hearts and our minds to you. Hear us as we, your people, pray to you. Loving God, thank you for hearing our prayers, for turning towards us as we turn our attention towards you. We trust that you will answer our prayers according to your will and in your time. But now hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This time our ushers will receive our morning's offering. Let each of us give as we are able according to the blessings which God has already given to us.
thank you. Thank you for the, all the wonderful gifts that you've given to us. We thank you for the gifts that we are able to share with the church. We thank you for the gifts that we have brought forward this day. And we ask your blessing upon all our gifts. That they might be used to bring joy and peace and love and compassion and justice to the folks that we know and love and through our congregation to the world around us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Let's uh, close our worship by singing together. It's hymn number 311 in the New Century Hymnal, the Black Hymnal, Renew Your Church. face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen.